I need to preface this video today as several developments have occurred since I recorded it that are relevant in this video because I will speak about the ongoing problems experienced by customers in securing products from GW and of course the issue of scalpers. While undoubtedly these problems remain ongoing, this week for the release of the Deathwing box set I noticed for the first time the GW require you to enter a visual character capture to join the queue. While Obviously, this will not completely resolve the problem of scalping. Any effort is a sign of them trying to move things in the right direction. And I personally always feel like these things are a matter of degrees. It's always going to dissuade or inhibit a certain number of people, and that's better than nothing. Now, on top of that, I have heard and also spoken with two individuals who have confirmed that Games Workshop appeared to have been cancelling some orders from last week of the last book in the Siege of Terror series, the third End and the Death book. This appears to demonstrate an effort on their part to root out scalpers and to stop them buying multiple copies. I will note the people I've spoken to were people who, in good faith, were buying two copies of that book to try and get them to friends and so on who were unlikely to get it so they could complete their collection. But nonetheless, it seems like Games Workshop are going in and making sure that people are only getting one as I believe there's a limit on that product per customer. So obviously they are going back and retroactively checking, okay, how many did this person buy on this card or whatever. Now, with all of these kind of efforts, somebody could say, well, why wasn't this done a lot earlier? Sure but what do you want? And then lastly, today it's the release of the Deathwing box, and this morning when I was attempting to get onto the Games Workshop store, by the time that I did, there were plenty of Deathwing box sets available and the Titanicus dice that I was after. All of this is by no means a sign that anything is perfect. The queue system is still very irritating, but at least through this process, when I got to the checkout today, my basket was not invalid or the website wasn't crashing like it was previously, so I guess you can, you know, take what you can get. I wanted to make this preface because I want you to please bear in mind these developments today as I discuss the ongoing issues as obviously I won't refer to them through the rest of the video because despite these small positives my question still remains why won't Games Workshop talk about any of this? So this is in many ways an update to a video I made about eight months ago where we discussed the ongoing problems faced by GW and I wanted to get this one in before I launched into the next law video, which will follow this hopefully next week. Now, that previous video, linked on screen now, was a lengthy, albeit pretty standard for me, 44 minutes long. And we dived into everything from FOMO to scalpers to the website problems, general lack of product availability, subjective value, a new distribution center, and people's worries about the release of 10th edition, and so on. Now, for those of you who reflexively chime in with, I don't care because I'm here for the law, sure, and that's all well and fine. Except if I was someone who only cared about the law and nothing else, I would still have the awareness to understand that the law is largely still driven by the miniature side of things even if at this point this is, in my opinion, largely unnecessary. This was something else I've spoken about eight months ago regarding the fact that one of the biggest positives, but also problems for GW, is the untapped value of the lore, paired with how challenging it will be to translate this to screens. Not only to do it justice and keep it in a tolerance range of lore accuracy, and attempting to condense and deliver this in an accessible way, but also the sheer complexity that exists in understanding even the foundational events and figures in the 40k or 30k verse. And then that's even before you get to the characters and details that exist in between the major eras of the Imperium. Now, we don't need to specifically rake over all of the stuff that I've talked about before again today, and I hope it's noted that I'm making this video a full week after people were perhaps not literally, but certainly figuratively foaming at the mouth in rage via online posts. And why? Well, you see, the end of the Heresy series saw GW launch a self-contained book series focused entirely on the arrival of the traitors at Terra, the Siege of Terra series. And these would come to us in hardback versions and also audiobook, and then a super special leather-bound FOMO edition. How many of those do I own? Just the one. 
because I bought the special edition version of Garrow's novella, because Nathaniel Garrow is one of my favourite characters in the Heresy, and I felt that that was necessary. Did I feel the need to fight against the hordes of scalpers and increase my blood pressure every month or so to secure the next in the limited edition series? Nope. Because from the outset, it was always going to be a horribly stressful collection to achieve. Ten novels, three novellas, all limited edition, most of which sold out instantly whenever they came up and crashed the website. From that first release onward, it was very clear just how things were going to go along. And honestly, just securing even the hardback books was sometimes difficult enough. I always like to consider myself a 40k appreciator more than a collector because a collector to me is somebody who always is striving to have a completed collection and they will also notably collect things they have no particularly invested interest in but will acquire them just for the sake of completion and then of course there are those who will never open a box or even remove the shrink wrap things like this to me that's what a collector is whereas an appreciator they just build up a selection of things that they find a personal affinity for, which is what I do. Yes, I do have a completed set of the Imperial Armor and Heresy Black books from Forge World, which are all out of print now, but that's because those books contain amazing excerpts of lore that are just not printed anywhere else now. They are important for my own personal reference, and I just enjoy having them. By contrast, do I have a full collection of White Dwarf magazines? Nope. In fact, I even chucked a load of them some years back when I was clearing through the house, and I found that White Dwarf basically became the Lord of the Rings show for several years, when the movies were at their fever pitch, so very often they contained little if anything about 40k, and so I just took some still images from my reference of bits that were interesting and then binned them. On the other side of the coin, I have on occasion purchased old White Dwarves, which I know contain singular references to specific aspects of 40k lore, such as the Titan Origins, or that infamous Psycho Lord Varlak, who managed to destabilize an entire planet with just the power of his psychic persuasion. It's a really excellent example of how rogue psychers can be very, very dangerous. Anyway, the point is, I didn't feel the compulsion to collect the Siege of Terror limited editions, because it was pretty clear that it was going to be a nightmare to acquire them from day one. And that would only become progressively more desperate and exasperating as time went on. And inevitably, no, my luck, I'd end up, if not at the last or before the last, not being able to get one of them. And for many people, of course, this is exactly what happened. This point was very hammered home when I saw people painfully showcasing their complete Siege of Terror sets this week. Complete except all but the final instalment of The End and the Death, which they missed out on this weekend in the catastrophic release where the entire website was basically behind a queuing wall for about 24 hours. And for those who missed out, now face being financially flayed at the hands of eBay scalpers, or forever seeing that empty space on the shelf, which for me would be more painful than not having attempted to collect the whole series in the first place. Now, as per some of my previous videos, really none of this is new. And while I have been periodically making mention of the frustrating situation with GW and their limited releases since basically 2019, a year after I got back into 40k properly, things really haven't improved significantly at all. And that is what I find bizarre. I feel like I need to say it again, that things really haven't improved in about five or six years. The only exceptions come with the release of the Indomitus box set and the 10th edition sets. I remember that there was a lot of people who were really ready to jump on the bandwagon of the 10th edition release being a disaster, loads of people were doom-mongering about it, and in the end, it was actually a surprising example of how it can be achieved and delivered if they want to. And certainly both of these were not completely smooth sailing, especially the 9th edition uh, Indomitus. But considering they were both the primary delivery system for the new editions, it's clear it was understood that these had to be available and in significant numbers. And for the most part, they were able to be acquired by pretty much everybody I knew who wanted them at the time. Now, of course, with the 9th edition Indomitus, this is when we saw that box set sell out almost immediately within the first hour of being online and scalpers went crazy. I think, you know, scalpers have been sort of ticking along doing 40k a little bit, but at that release, that was when things went mad and then have stayed mad since. 
And this was also when GW came back one day later saying that the box would be made to order because they could see, you know, the way the wind was blowing. And this immediately threw cold water on the profit margins of scalpers at that time. Now, some people since then have continued to say, well, why can't every limited edition box release be made to order? I think it's pretty clear that after several years, GW have no intention of making that possible. Why? I don't know. My guess would simply be that it's not how they want to operate the delivery of that product. I'd imagine that the logistics of making something made to order and the associated costs of time constraints there are considerably more complicated than just getting in a round of drinks and taking everyone's order. Also, I don't want to talk about it too extensively, but the scalping problem, it continues to exist when it comes to newly released 40k products, especially when it's limited product releases. However, this is not something that is exclusive to Warhammer, obviously. Ever since the period of 2020 to 22, scalping has become an invasive problem for consumers, often just generally in more niche areas. From PlayStations to shoes, really anything that's limited and desirable with a profit margin. I'm sure Stanley Cups are on the chopping block at the moment. And yes, we've all seen the recent uploaded footage of people who are running bots scalping to secure products easily and showing ordinary plebs like us who struggle to secure it. Yeah, we, we see all this stuff. We know it's there. Can all companies design systems to do something about it? Yeah, probably they could. Will they? Probably not. Games Workshop's solution has been to just throw everybody into a gigantic queue system which has proven to be about as effective as the Imperial Administratum. Everyone just waiting for the slim chance to get their case heard and then just likely denied. In fact, things have got so stressful and difficult in securing that last Siege of Terror book, and understandably so. I know that some people even had friends in other countries around the world securing it for them. It really was completely insane, and I think that desperation and insanity speaks a lot toward the general state of things when it comes to 40k product the lengths people are now having to go to because the basic products can't be made readily available to consumers and part of that of course is contending with scalpers. For just the ordinary fans, consumers of 40k products, you often now run a high risk of missing out on the new thing because you are seeing more and more scalping taking place and a significant percentage of the units there. Now this issue of limited quantities is something that I, again I've talked about before and really nothing has changed so rather than relitigate all of that I'll move on but suffice to say it's a problem and I will circle back to finishing that thought at the end of the video. As surely everybody knows by now it's all too easy to fall into a trap of either being too positive and fanboyish about a franchise or a product or too negative about pretty much anything on social media and YouTube. And whilst of course people will always come in on a video in a comment section and be like, oh you're shilling for this company, you're positive about this, or why do you hate these things, and blah blah blah. The vast majority of the audience will understand and know a creator having watched them for a long time and know something about them, their character, and therefore be able to make an informed understanding about that particular creator. But then there are still channels which devote themselves singularly to being very negative about their chosen subject matter in a very transparent way. Which is always a strange thing to me, because sure, if the thing you love is not going the way you want, sure, talk about it at length. But what I do know is that after a few years of that, I would get bored grinding away at the same stone and just accept that the thing that I enjoy and want is changing and then you move on. Why are you flogging a dead horse? But of course, as we understand, most of the time, that's not really what it's about. What it is about is that it's just a known fact that being very negative and critical about anything is very literally the easiest and laziest kind of content to make. Plus, it gains more traction than just being positive or just even objective and constructive. Just look at any mainstream legacy media and you see exactly, of course, we all know that's what it's all about. The reality is, of course, that when sometimes things can seem hopeless, and in some cases, while that may be true, there often is still a more balanced approach. When it comes to the law, when it comes to 40k as it is, Games Workshop keeps a very tight rein on the specific details that they've spent 30 years crafting, and they don't seem inclined to really shift in any kind of way other than what they want to put out. Now, the other thing, of course, is that just talking crap about a faceless corporation is always going to be very easy and self-gratifying, 
because there is always an audience for it. Trust me, because I spent years talking about EA and Battlefield and how that game franchise was also being run into the ground, which it sort of was and is. What did I achieve from all of my constructive thoughts and my objective feedback and my engagement with the developers and people I knew? Very, very little. And that's what turned me on to realizing that despite what YouTube audiences think, most big companies pay little if any attention at all to YouTube creators. It doesn't matter if you've got 500,000 subscribers. It doesn't matter if you've got 800,000, a million, two million. A lot of these big companies do what they want to do and they don't pay attention to YouTube creators. Some people would say, why should they? And that's fair enough as well. The state of product availability is equally interesting, relevant and somewhat concerning to see. Does that though mean that I need to be making weekly ranting videos about it? Not really. And also, as I've noted before, it's far easier to be either bursting with optimism about product or teeth grindingly raging about it than to walk that middle path of accepting that actually some things are not where they should be, but other things are actually pretty good. Now, how would that be possible, you say, when it comes to 40k, when all we see are people pulling their teeth out in frustration at scalpers, the evil Games Workshop gleefully rubbing their mitts together to rinse us all of our cash? Well, the thing is, objectively, 40k is in a better place than it has been for pretty much all of my life. And to be absolutely clear, because it's very easy sometimes to forget things that have come along in the past, Games Workshop have very rarely on occasion spoken to these problems like for example the Indomitus box set and going to make that to order but also the Kill Team Octarius set where they even specifically say we know scalpers are a giant pain in the ass and that's why we're going to make sure you can each get your copy but very strangely they only did that and only spoke about it in that specific instance and not for everything else. Why? A great many people came into 40k at the start of the 8th edition when things got a huge kick forward with the whole Primaris, Gilliman, Gathering Storm situation, and to be truthful, I was not at all a fan of the Primaris right out the gate. But I very, very clearly remember at the time people saying, that's it, that's the end of the Firstborn Marines, they're done, they're going to stop production of Firstborn Marines like next year, that's it. And then a year went past, and then a year went past, and then a year went past, and the Firstborn Marines are still here. And I think that's an interesting thing, is that the sort of doomsaying doesn't always come true. For myself, I've been softly getting back into 40k throughout the 7th edition, and I'd phased out of doing 40k during, I guess, around the 4th edition. And one of the core reasons that I stopped was that it was just kind of boring to me at the time, plus I had a lot of real-world stuff going on with work and whatnot. The story wasn't really moving forward, and over time that just began to continually make everything feel sort of pointless and endlessly grinding, like what were you working toward? Now around that time when I stopped the actual physical game, this was also the time where the Heresy book series was starting up, and so that did keep my interest in 40k, by my ability to just focus on the novels and the lore for many years, until eventually when I had some time available, I decided to revisit the miniatures again, and this is how I steadily got pulled back in. And then just as I was thinking to myself again, I really wish for once they would just move things forward, the gathering storm happened. My point is that all the new models are nice, limited book releases are enjoyable, if you can get them, and I pick up the ones that interest me where I can, like recently Gene Father, because I had Call and Fabius Bile, and I was like, this is probably going to be a pretty good one to get as a limited, and so I did. But what I really wanted more than anything when it came to 40k and the start of 8th edition was just for things to move and expand forward in some regard. And since then, Games Workshop have been pushing forward with the novels, the stories of the 40k verse, at a rate that is completely unprecedented. They have new releases basically every week. Most of these are available on Audible or from their Black Library site, also as audiobooks. Really, the sheer rate of new material has gone from being barely existent to almost too much to contend with. I do still read, but I often find myself using audiobooks just so that I can double up time whilst painting miniatures. Now, also a heads up, I hope later this year to have a new space at home for live streaming, painting, chatting, so I might do a weekly or bi-weekly stream hangout, but that's all ideas down the line. But that would also give me an ability to talk more pertinently around this kind of subject matter. 
Overall though, my point is that despite the questionable necessity of doing these limited army box releases and the limited book editions, which is often very irritating and the state of the website paired with it, how it's considerably more irritating to navigate now. Some people don't agree, but I find very few who really enjoy. It is very easy to get wrapped up in these things. And to be absolutely clear, I still do not consider it acceptable to very loyal customers to just tease these amazing releases and then not have the quantity of product available to seemingly cope with even a small percentage of the customers that want it. This is something that does need to change in some respect. I would note that people have been raging about this for years now, since like 2019, and there still seems to be little if any change in this regard, which makes me somewhat with a sense of resignation feel like it's either going to improve or not. But honestly, people raging about it seems to achieve very, very little. Does that mean people should just stop publicly noting their frustration? Obviously not, because visibly unhappy customers do maintain a sense that things need to improve, and that's probably a necessary thing. Although, you always have to be careful that if people are just consistently doing that, but also I guess not actually voting with your wallet, it can become kind of like white noise. Business, eh? Well, let me tell you something. You just lost yourself a customer. What? I'm sorry, Homer, I couldn't hear you. I said you just lost yourself a customer. What? You just lost yourself a customer. Homer, you're gonna have to speak up. Just lost yourself a customer. It's up to everybody to just decide what they want to do, I guess. But it also means that I myself will not be expending massive energy talking about it at length because likely I will continue to post these sort of updates every six to eight months and just sort of see where things stand. I also would continue to note that despite everybody still talking about the heresy and the end and the death revelations, all of which are important, make no mistake, I have been greatly enjoying the Dawn of Fire series, which has been following the more current era of the Imperium, the contemporary time. Not every novel in that series has been a winner, but that's nothing new when it comes to the 40k novels. It's certainly even true of the Siege of Terror series. But several of those Dawn of Fire books have been genuine page turners for me, especially the first three in the series. Which makes me very excited for where the writing of 40k goes from here. With the heresy wrapped up, where do we go to? The Age of Apostasy or an all-out focus on the developing situation in M41? Or maybe both? So about a week ago when I was thinking about this video, I decided to record a few clips of me checking out the current situation with the GW site, what is available and what's not. Because things will of course periodically go out of stock like any store, but what's available if you were say coming in new or if you were trying to expand your existing force. And the results were pretty surprising. I felt that it was just necessary to look at this to try and understand the bigger picture and make some comment about this. Right, so here we are on the Warhammer website. Um, I'm gonna have a look and see what their kind of stocking levels are like, how unavailable are certain things, are key things unavailable, what's in stock. Straight up from the pre-orders yesterday, uh, the End and the Death Volume 3. This is just the hardback version, the ordinary version if you like, but people often still covet the hardbacks. It's still available. The website was pretty much on the queuing system and taking you an hour or more to get onto the website for pretty much the whole of yesterday. This is still available today. Let's just look at core space marines. Let's see what is available here. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip over everything. I'm going to go straight down to the bottom. What is actually unavailable for space marines. It's one of the factions that people obviously tend to get into out of the gate because it's space marines. So let's see what is unavailable. You've got Ventress, the uh, Deathwing Terminators, Knights Command, the Aggressors surprisingly out of stock, the Devastator Centurions out of stock and the Assault, basically Centurions out of stock, some Dark Angels, Blood Angels, uh, Kill Team Cassius, some of the older models there, Space Wolves, the Corvus Blackstar for the Death Watch, um, an Iron Father for the Iron Hands, Old Asmodai, Belial, Sanguinar, Rune Priest, the real big uh, Forge World stuff, so the Astraeus, the Thunderhawk, a few customization kits, a couple of Grey Knight stuff, Drago, and the Grey Knight's Land Redeemer. But basically, actually not really a lot that is critically out of stock. The Grey Knights could be annoying if you're trying to do Grey Knights, I guess. Uh, but again, how many people have got a Grey Knight Terminator army? Not too many. Uh, the Corvus Black Star, similarly, it's a cool model, but for Death Watch, and again, or Inquisition, I guess you could sort of argue, um, you know, how, do you, how much you need that. So yeah, for the most part, 
the Space Marines, you can pretty much get the entire range. Let's have a look at something else. Let's look at Armies of the Imperium. Let's look at Sororitas. Not critical, those three. The Arco Flagellant's irritating, but of course, some models just do go out of stock from time to time. When will they come back? That's anybody's guess. You know, for the Sororitas, again, most of the stuff you could get there. What about Astra Militarum? Now, again, I'm going to do like the Space Marines. I'm just going to go to the bottom and see what is not of it. Whoa, okay, we got to the... <laughs> we got to unavailable quite quickly there. So for the Astra Militarum, Torox not available, Torox Prime not available, Kadashan Fighters not available, Kadashan Heavy Squad not available, uh, the Index Militarum, the old ones. Krieg, no, Krieg, Krieg, uh, Carnadon, Praetor, these, a lot of these are Forge World. A lot of Forge World tanks for Imperial Guard not available. But then for the most part, the rest of the Imperial Guard stuff, which I guess like you could argue like the core Imperial Guard stuff, there is still some Forge World available. Core Imperial Guard stuff, some of the new things that they've put out, many of the tanks, etc, etc, they're still available. But it's a shame a lot of the Forge World stuff, if you wanted all the Krieg stuff, that's a shame as well. Let's go Tyranids, because Tyranids obviously had a lot of new stuff recently. I mean, straight away, uh, the Combat Patrol is there, the Prime, the Psychophage, Neurogaunts, the Leapers, the Barb Gaunts, uh, the Biotiter, the Hierophant. That was out of stock, I remember, for a little while, but it seems to have come back again. These are Forge World, the Haradon and the Haradjul. Haradjul, Haradjul. Will they come back? Forge World Tyranids probably quite low on the priority list, so I guess we'll see. Surprisingly for Tyranids, yeah, the MSRE, the big, all the big stuff, all the new stuff, the Pyrovore, Biovore, Death Leaper, etc. It's pretty much all there. So Eldar, let's have a look. The Revenant Titan out of stock, I got one of those, which is a very nightmare build, uh, but that's out of stock. Some of the very big tanks for the Eldar, the Night Spinner out of stock, surprisingly. Eldar, 90% in stock. Let's have a look at Necrom. Combat Patrol Necrons there, the new models which just came out, available, the new data cards which just came out, available, flayed ones, chronomancers, royal court, uh, all this stuff is fine, you've got the Silent King, Triarch Stalker, blah 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 blah. So Necrons, if you wanted to do a Necron army, you basically have the full choice, apart from Canoptic Wraith, um, the Serap deck, the Tesseract Vault, I knew that this was out of stock because I was trying the other day to get a Transcendent Catan, and I... I ordered it from Games Workshop, and then they basically said, oh, actually, sorry, you ordered it on the site, but it wasn't available, actually, so I couldn't have that. So now they are actually out temporarily out of stock. But basically, for Necrons, similarly, 90% available. So what's available for Kill Team right now? Starter set, core book, a load of little squads, squad, squad, squads, all of the specific books that they've done from the releases, Nakman, Chalnath, Octarius. Surprising, actually, that they're still available. The recent Kill Zone, this has just come out, that is not available. The Kill Team Salvation, not available. That was also another recent one. Uh, this is the Arbity Squad, that's not available. The Gallo Dark, this was, again, for the most part, I guess one which would be nice, these crit Critical Ops, Tac Ops Mission card pack, not there. Kill Team, largely there. So Necromunda, straight away, what I would say is I've a quite big problem. The core Necromunda set is not available right now. I will say with these other games, obviously they periodically do run out of the core set. And, and why is the core set important? The core set is important because it has everything you need to play the game. So it's it's pretty important. Like yes, you could buy the rule book, but then what about the dice? What about the counters, etc, etc, the cards you need? So it's kind of important. And I think what makes that worse is then obviously the core rule book for Necromunda is out of stock. This is the one, the really thick one, which has all of the supplements, all the rule supplements that they have done since release in that one book, also out of stock. So that's quite a problem. The actual models for Necromunda are available, which is, I guess, good. Like if you had a friend who was already playing and you wanted to go over and play, you could just start doing the models. But let's just see whether there is another rule book available. I'm thinking perhaps not. Now, again, they are obviously available digitally, but that's not ideal perhaps always the zone mortalis uh, tiles hilariously are in stock funny because they were out of stock for the longest time again like the uh, webway gates over a year those were unavailable and they were going for ridiculous prices on uh, ebay like three four times the price uh, because they were unavailable for so long so basically you can get the core rulebook as the epub version uh, similarly to how you can get many of those other things. But the core rulebook itself, not available. So pretty much if you wanted to get into Necromunda right now, you can't. You might have success on some third-party store. You might have some success there. There may be a third-party store where you would be able to get the rulebook or whatever. But it's pretty bad that on the main website, I mean, the, the, in 
in defense a lot of these other books which i always say are really interesting and good a lot of these sort of supplementary books because they have a ton of additional lore material not just for necromunda specifically but about hive cities and what occurs in them but nonetheless if you're getting them you probably want to be playing the game and doing the other stuff as well a large amount of the models are available which is good but maybe people aren't rushing the models off the shelf because they can't buy the core game and the core rulebook titanicus is an amazing game and i keep wanting to recommend it to people and the reason that I don't recommend it to people is that for a period of time that I have lost track of now, but easily six months, the Adeptus Titanicus core set, similarly to Necromunda, is not available. And similarly to Necromunda, whilst you can buy the Titans for Titanicus and other stuff, you basically need this core set to play. Because it has the dice, it has the markers, and so on and so on. It has the rulebook. Theoretically, you could probably get around playing if you didn't have the core cool rulebook. There are these campaign compendiums, which are good. They contain, like, again, all the supplementary stuff for the campaigns. They've got the Traitor Legio book, the Loyalist Legio book. So if you're playing Loyalists, that's got all the Loyalist stuff in there. A lot of the cards are available, which is good. Again, a lot of cards and stuff available for the game. That's good. Uh, they've got these command terminals additionally available. A lot of the weapon cards are available. That's good. So I can't see a core rulebook available for Titanicus, which is kind of bonkers because you can get everything else to play the game except the core rulebook. You can buy all the knights and titans because they're now under the legions imperialis but you can't buy the rulebook individually you know really what you want is if they're not going to do this starter set you at least want to be able to buy the rulebook and the dice should be sold you can get around the the markers and stuff but the dice should be available if you were new to playing you cannot play adeptus titanicus right now this system cannot function right now because it doesn't have a rulebook available which is kind of mad black library what books could you buy 64 items okay pilgrims of fire that's a good one paperback uh, awakenings is good some warhammer crime krieg all these are going to be paperback now because the hardbacks have been out ages ago some warhammer crime there as well fabius bile omnibus Martyrs is good infinite divine prior etc brutal cunning good crime series again bloodlines is good call great work oh, i always recommend that they do they are hitting i guess the core books that are available like in terms of the sort of newer ones which have been pretty good but the lion out of stock the first founding hardback book this was still available for quite a long time but finally seems to have gone out uh, the paperback penitent one out of stock vaults of terror collection that was a recent limited unavailable and so limited so out of 40k and what there is it's a pretty thin showing fiction from black library necromunda okay none fiction for black library horus heresy See, a lot of people say with the Horus Heresy, the first four to five books are important and then the rest you can pick and choose. They've got Flight of the Eisenstein, Horus Rising, False Gods, Galaxy and Flames. First Heretic, No No Fear is worth it, Master of Mankind is worth it, Slaves to Darkness is interesting, Buried Dagger has got some has got some interesting little details in there, Betrayer obviously people will want, Valdor Birth of the Imperium, paperback, out of stock, which is a shame. I don't see Sigismund or Luther in here. For the Horus Heresy, I mean, extremely 16 items, some of which are out of stock, so actually 14. 14 items for the entire Horus Heresy available. I know that they do made to order and you buy several books of the Horus Heresy periodically, but it does seem kind of mad there isn't any kind of system by which you can basically buy what is one of the fundamental book series, obviously digitally. You can buy everything digitally. You can get all the EPUBs digitally from the Black Library website. Now, obviously, you can buy books secondhand, okay? You can go on eBay, you can go to bookshops, you can buy stuff secondhand, that's fine. But it also is kind of weird that there is, even if they didn't have everything, you would expect more than 14 books available for the Horus Heresy. Okay, lastly, let's just go to one of my favourites, uh, Warhammer Crime. Three. Three is disappointing, because there are so many good Warhammer Crime books that are available. Bloodlines, which is there. Wraithbone Phoenix, which is there. King of the Spoil, which is there. What about Broken City? What about Sanction and Sin? What about Grim Repast? What about No Good Men? I'm just looking up at my bookshelf. It's a bit disappointing. There have been loads of really good stuff come out recently, like the Inquisition set. You'd imagine that maybe something like the Primarch series would be really good to have. And it's just not there. So overall, what I found is that most of the core product is readily available, with a few exceptions that may or may not be irritating for people and may well come back in stock relatively soon. What I found to be more shocking and arguably unacceptable is that multiple core box sets which are effectively entirely necessary to play some of the adjacent game systems 
are just unavailable. And not just recently, but for months and months and months. Now, just before we come to the final thoughts, I'm going to do like I did previously, where I asked you guys on my community tab for your thoughts, your opinions, your experiences. If you don't know where the community tab is, it's right here on your screen. You can reach that no matter your platform, whether you're on desktop or your phone. Community tab is always just worth checking on because I do use it as a means of communication and just showcasing various bits and pieces. Probably need to get some miniatures on there at some point. Anyway, your thoughts about this ongoing issue. Azimuth said, I think their pre-orders should be handled by a completely separate website. It's absolutely mental that you can't get on the website to look at anything on a pre-order day when you're not actually interested in that pre-order product. And I, I saw actually many people saying this. Since they've started doing this new, completely kind of locked in queuing system on pre-order day, it means that you basically can't get to anything else. And because it goes across global time zones, it means that basically on a pre-order day, the website is just completely locked out for anybody who was just wanting to browse the website. Some people use the website to, for example, browse and look at how to paint a model or to reference like painting schemes or whatever. So they're basically removing a community resource for an entire day just for that pre-order. And I've seen that this is becoming more and more irritating for people. So yeah, it is kind of interesting. Cosmoceratops says, funny how they manufacture hype for such a small market. Like they're not making Xboxes or iPhones. If they could consistently, reliably provide product, even at their crazy prices and buy two box for one kill team practices, they'd make more money. But they fight these weird anti-consumer battles at every point on the path of providing their product. This is something that I often see people talk about as well, is a sort of confusion about the focus seemingly being on these limited boxes and pre-orders and stuff like that instead of like I was looking at earlier delivering fundamental things like a Necromunda core starter box set and that just seems very confusing because sure whenever you do a limited box set it seems to just completely sell out instantly but the very fact that it sells out instantly seems to suggest that it's not being produced in massive numbers but it seems hard to square in your mind against just providing product that people clearly want and the fact that they sell out every single time for years seems to suggest there is a much bigger market for the products they're making. So why don't they just make more? And that's what seems to be really hard for people to get their head around. Lena Mishima says, as a security professional who has done work in the games industry, this continuing problem of scalping we're talking about here isn't a surprise. Whenever there is a financial incentive to abuse the system and an active community who are profiting from that, there's no easy fix. Whilst things like a capture can help, there's no substitute for real human investigative and enforcement work. But for any real progress to happen, it really needs to be looked at much earlier than at the sales process. If you're not understanding what other factors are driving the behavior you don't want and addressing them at a design stage, any point of sale protective system is at best going to be a band-aid. And I think that is a really, really well thought through statement to make. Because, yeah, it's fundamentally addressing the fact that if there is a space in the market for a scalper to fill, i.e. if you're not making it easy enough or readily enough available to your consumers, your product, if it's not easy enough to access, then there are always going to be people who will exploit that situation. And you could apply that to a vast number of different businesses and services. A person said, well, they had this capture type thing to join the queue this morning and stock was still available of that Deathwing box 45 minutes later. So it seems that they have a solution to the scalpers, at least until they find a workaround. I did hear this from a lot of people and you better believe that Deathwing box set was in demand. I'd spoken to many people I know, people who play the tabletop game, that Deathwing box set, people wanted it. And the fact that it was still available sort of 45 minutes to an hour later after going live, it does demonstrate that either their, their system on the website was helping or that they had made enough product. Orange Drank said, they just do not understand that for the limited edition books, most people couldn't care less about the signature or I guess the fact that it's limited. What they want is the gorgeous leather bound version of the book to add insult to injury. This problem is easily solved by just having limited signatures for sale like now, but then having a different stock of unsigned leather bound copies. I absolutely 1000% agree with this. I've said this previously in other videos. This is where things need to be at. 
They say also that personally, the Lion and Son of the Forest books was when they had had enough. It was deflating to not get a limited edition, but to then also not be able to even get a hardback copy, saw to it that I will never buy any of their books going forward. Again, I have seen and know people who have this very sort of final effect from the fact that they can't get product. They just get pissed off at a certain point. And this is a big, big problem in my mind. And what is that saying that I can't think of off the top of my head about it being, you know, much more easy to keep an existing customer than to find new ones? And I really do think that's true, that when you have somebody who's fully invested in something like 40k, which is still in the big scheme of things fairly niche, that person is a buying customer but then it becoming so difficult for that person to buy product that eventually people will lose patience. They'll just get pissed off and they just think, I don't want to go through the stress of this. I've known many people who unbelievably, when we're talking about something which is a leisure activity, it's not an essential thing in your day-to-day -day life, but the thought of trying to get the things that you would like from this, what should be a very enjoyable pastime, becomes actually a miserable stress because just trying to fight against the difficulty of getting these things just becomes really horrible. And so people eventually just think, I'm kind of done with this. And that can't be good. And then lastly, their name I'm going to say as Urx. You were the reason I actually started getting deeper into the law, getting an Audible subscription and listening to the Horace Heresy books during my commute. Now I'm at a point where I would love to give my money to GW for hardcover editions for certain books, especially Heresy 1 to 5. But unfortunately, this is not possible. Games Workshop just refused to print these books for whatever reason. The ones they have actually printed in limited quantities then also resell for ridiculous amounts of money. And again, that comment is a ringing endorsement of the situation of where things stand right now. And this is why I say, personally, I, I haven't really been able to recommend to people to play like Necromunda or Titanicus like I used to. I used to tell people like, yeah, yeah, these other game systems, they're really fun, you should go check them out. But it's difficult to do that when you can't get the core box sets for six months to a year. And similarly, again, I'll talk about this as we go into the sort of final thoughts, but this is this ongoing thing now where it can be quite difficult to recommend 40K in some respects to new people because it's like, oh yeah, it's really cool, but there are various whole sections of the hobby where you will be very lucky to get it other than eBay, which is kind of mad. So just as we come to the final thoughts of the video, I just want to remind again about the preface at the start of this video about how there has been some movement in the right direction, but nonetheless, that doesn't still avoid some of the ongoing issues which are still there remaining. So to round this out comes this puzzling, thorny subject. Why won't they talk about it? And by it, I mean this inability to deliver what amounts to quite critical products reliably. Because Yes, it's irritating when limited sets get scalped. It's disappointing if you're looking forward to something that was heavily marketed only for it to be immediately out of stock now and forever. And quite honestly, sometimes I'm confused by the amount of marketing that is put forward toward a product which then immediately is sold out and must have had quite limited numbers. To me, that seems strangely disproportionate. But really overall, the disappointing answer to any of this is, I just don't know. I don't know why GW refuses to speak about the situation whereby their limited releases are being sold on for massive markups, or why they're so regularly produced in these limited quantities, why they continue to only produce a few thousand copies of special edition books when clearly there is a much, much bigger market for them, who care a lot more about having this pretty book on their shelf collection than its limited nature. I expect many people aren't even that fussed about books being signed. They want the nice cover and the little extra details for their collection to look nice, more than knowing it's issue 100 of 1020 or whatever. I don't know why it's acceptable for some of their core product lines to have the box sets, which are functionally critical to make a game system possible, out of stock for over six months, and make no public post about this, no promise for these to be available within a time frame, and I don't know why novels are not more regularly given additional print runs when they very, very regularly sell out within 24, 48 hours. I can't understand why something like The Gathering Storm has not been placed into an omnibus edition for everybody to gain access to what is one of the most defining elements of contemporary 40k, 
as I have said before. And when I speak to new people coming into 40k, they want it. They want that Gathering Storm omnibus. And when I tell them that it's not particularly available or accessible, this is actually very disheartening, even dissuading to people who were coming in. They suddenly kind of realize, oh, it's actually a bit difficult to get kind of some of the core elements here and it's not very easily accessible and it's quite limiting. For somebody who's trying to come into the 40k verse, that's quite off-putting. I hope things improve, but I truly wish they would just come out and give the community a sincere, calm, pragmatic statement about what is going on with product and what the roadmap is. None of this I have answers for because I simply cannot understand why you wouldn't want to reassure or address these problems for your customers. And these are customers who I genuinely believe would be very more than understanding about the difficult climate we've faced in the past years when it comes to business and the state of the world that maybe things are still very, very challenging in terms of production, delivery, all these kind of different things. Not to mention, of course, we're all well aware that Games Workshop has been working towards scaling up their production and maybe down the line, things will get easier product that is critical to your brand and game system will become more reliably available. That is understandable. You have to give a bit of leeway there. But it just seems to me that wouldn't this be something to speak to? To just put out a perhaps yearly statement saying, look, this has been a difficult year. These are the things we face. This is how we try to handle it. Going forward, this is what we are trying to look at to do. That to me would be really, really constructive. And it enrages some people when I've said this kind of thing before, but the scalping situation and the limited box releases, for me, honestly, it is irritating for sure. But it also kind of is the nature of things in 2024, such as it is. It's completely irritating, it sucks, but it really is what it is. What annoys me is that I've wanted to make a video explaining about why Adeptus Titanicus is one of the most accessible, most enjoyable, 30k or 40k game systems for the longest time but it would just be ridiculous for me to do that because I would make a video talking about it and then have to say oh by the way the core box has been unavailable for so long so then the same can be said also for the novels basically if you want to get into reading the law and the material of 40k your options for anything beyond the newest releases are basically epubs or audiobooks or of course, obviously, a very large second-hand market. We can't ignore that. It's always true that books, of course, are sold and available in many places second-hand. That, to me, is not a full answer, because the fact that many supplements or other materials are not available from GW itself, that's also an issue. If only also for the fact that, isn't it a little strange or even awkward that if you went into, say, a Warhammer store, or were speaking to friends about, say, again, yeah, Gathering Storm, or what about the most recent events, like I said, in Genefather with Call and Fabius Bile, you get excited as a new person coming in to imagine owning these things for yourself. And then you ask the store manager or your friends, well, where can I get this for my collection? And the answer is, well, you can't. Or if you want to find it, you have to trawl through eBay. You might find one for a decent price, but who knows, it might be a bit damaged or not, you know? And the fact that this applies to a lot of 40k products beyond the default line of miniatures, six years after the release of Gathering Storm, and with no word or end in sight to these issues, it's pretty frustrating and quite disappointing. And like I say, not least because where I used to actively recommend getting into game systems like Titanicus and Necromunda. I used to do that very regularly for people. I haven't done so for maybe over six months to a year at this point because you just can't really. And I find that uncomfortable to have to tell people who are excited to get into 40k that when it comes to books, you've got this razor thin window of opportunity to get them. And then they're basically gone forever. It really is a sad state of affairs, but again, to not want to be completely bleak and negative, it still is true that things are being pushed forward, developed, created at a higher rate and frequency than we've ever seen before. I just wish that I could enjoy that sweet fact for what it is without it being also soured by all the other things that continue to pull that down. I mean, another big positive, I will say, I've recently played my first games of 10th edition. I've been having a massive amount of enjoyment painting and planning my 40k armies and other projects. There's a ton of good stuff going on. The social media aspect, the community aspect is bigger, more enjoyable, more engaging than ever before. But it really seems kind of mad and a big shame 
that there's very little point in me telling some people about some specific things because just getting them is so difficult. It's not even worth telling people like, oh, you should really play this because it's it's so fun, it's so good. Uh, but you can't because you can't get the box set, so you can't have the rules and the dice and the markers and stuff. So, so actually, it's really good, but you can't play it. So coming into 2024 with 40k, there's this very strange sort of double-edged sword feel to everything that on the one side promises excitement, revelations, fun, anticipation, and on the other, more frustration, disappointment, and confusion. Where are we going to be in six months from now? I have no idea, but I guess we will see. As always, I welcome your thoughts. Please try to keep them constructive because, like I say, it's very easy to get carried away, as I've noted, with being pulled down into the negative and for myself i look forward to another very enjoyable year discussing around these things i've got many ongoing series that we can continue with so i'm looking forward to that a lot as well anyway thanks for watching there will be another video coming up before the end of the month and as always i appreciate your viewership and continued support i'll see you all in the next one